Hi, welcome to Well Runner Mama's YouTube channel. I got Caprice to come back. Yay! <laughs> For those of you who don't remember Caprice, she's a student midwife as well as a lactation counselor. And so today we're going to talk about milk production. I mean, breastfeeding milk production. So I've nursed a lot of babies now of my own. <laughs> I've got four babies that I've nursed. So when it comes to milk production, that is a process that does begin during pregnancy. So I, I don't know if most people know that, maybe it's, this is common knowledge, but it does begin halfway through your pregnancy. The second phase happens after the birth of baby. During pregnancy, although we are making milk, we don't flow readily due to the hormones that are intact there. During that second phase, what happens is once the placenta is born, now we have a, a sharp decrease in our progesterone. And then we also now have this prolactin hanging around. So that stimulates that second phase where now we go from having some milk that's being produced into now copious milk. Then we go into our third phase where that is how are things looking with bringing baby to the breast or to the chest and milk removal. So that's that next phase that happens. And so how do we know if baby's getting enough? I don't know, what are some things that you've noticed with your babies? I think it's nice to hear personal stories uh, a little bit. Sorry. She just wants me to go like. back. <laughs> it's been a long time. My youngest is 15. I have to admit, breastfeeding was hard, Yeah. right? Like for me, yeah. it was hard. Now I know that my kids, some of them had ties, which played a really big role. But I do know that my kids had wet and poopy diapers that were doing well. And that was really such a relief to me to know that, yeah. because I never pumped. I've never once in my life I pumped because I went to like a woman's conference. <laughs> the rest of the time, I never, I've never, I never owned a pump. I never, that was just not something yeah. I, I did. And so like, I can imagine like how nerve wracking that is, especially women going back to work. Cause in your mind you go, oh my gosh, is, is this all I'm producing? So I never had that. My fourth child mm -hmm. um, was diagnosed with failure to thrive and he was nursing and I thought he was getting enough because he wasn't crying. Yeah. He never cried, but his output was rare. Like there were times where he didn't have a bowel movement and people would be like, oh, well, babies utilize all the breast milk. And so sometimes that happens, but sure. that wasn't my experience. That right. my experience was he wasn't having output because he wasn't getting enough input. I think looking back on it, I wish I had had someone who had talked to me and said, you need to take care of yourself. For me, it was more about making sure I was eating and sleeping and I didn't have somebody like feeding me and taking care of myself. And so I would be up with the baby and taking care of the baby. And it was about the baby and the baby and the baby and the baby. Nobody ever said to me like, Hey, if you don't take care of yourself, you won't continue to have breast milk to right. feed your kids. And I think that's what happened with my fourth is mm -hmm. I got so caught up into taking care of my children. I wasn't taking care of me yeah. and it, affected my breastfeeding relationship. I don't think I, I have a lack of ability yeah. to produce milk as much as it was, I just didn't prioritize my own self-care, if that makes sense. Yeah, and that makes sense as far as, so then we look at like how production works. We look at some of the hormones, right? Again, mm -hmm. hormones. If we're stressed out, uh, we have oxytocin and prolactin. Those are two uh, of the main hormones involved in um, lactation. If we're really stressed or if we're not resting enough, something, is going on where some of that self-care isn't able to happen, we can see that, or mm. or we're not bringing baby to, to the chest enough. Mm. Um, we do see that bringing baby to the chest, bringing baby to latch, that is a, a good way to really, in the beginning days, to establish mm. that good supply. If baby is removing milk and baby is able to nurse on demand, we see that that really, in those beginning uh, days, gets us off on a good foot, right? Yeah. But it also has to do with removal. So the interesting thing is with removal, if our breasts are feeling full, there is um, a way involved in that uh, protein in which if there is excess of that or if that is now filling the breast, that tells our body to slow down with milk production mm. when our breast is full because it's full. Like we can't, what are we gonna do? It's full. So if we um, are having baby drain breast effectively and often, that tells the body to increase the production of milk. So keep it moving. We So frequent milk removal. You know what? I like you bringing this up from the standpoint of looking at that kid, right? He, to this day, he's now 18 and he, like he could be walking around with holes in his shoes. And I'd be like, Hey, Peyton, do you need new shoes? And he'd be like, 
no, I'm fine. Like he's still that kid, right? So like he was content to be like, my other kids have been like, I'm hungry, get over here and feed me. Yeah. Whereas his personality wasn't, totally wasn't such that he was like, meh, it's, it, I don't want to, you know, and so it's interesting he came to me that way, right? <laughs> Isn't that fascinating that our children kind of come to us with these personalities and some of them yeah. to this day, that is his personality. So you bringing that up, because I've always like blamed myself for that mm. lack of self-care, but I mm. like that what you're saying, like if he didn't come to me to nurse or that wasn't something I did because I was getting caught up in my day to day, yeah. like that makes sense. Like if I wasn't getting those nursings in. Yeah, because he's hanging know. out. He's fine. He was fine. Yeah. He was like, I don't know, I'm, there's all these siblings running around. Sure, entertaining me <laughs> and I'm good. whatever. Or <laughs> I like you bringing up this idea of like, as your kid gets older, you've got to continue putting them to the breast, right? Yeah, yeah. So having that milk removal is uh, part of the key. What if there's an issue? You're saying bring baby to the breast. Well, what if my baby's not able to do mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. There's ways we can work around that and that's okay. Uh, manual expression, either your hand expressing or a pump. Now, what about some women? Some women come to me and go, ah, oh, but my breasts never feel full, or I don't get that tingling sensation, or I don't. What would you say to women who are concerned about that, that are worried sure. about their breasts not feeling full? Yeah, there's a few markers that talks about our oxytocin, mm. and so that kind of boils down to uh, hormones sometimes. So there's a few different markers. Sometimes we don't feel that, mm. and that's normal. And that's what I think I told individuals, but I, I think there's a it's worry just, or a concern. But definitely watching, I mean, you know, watching baby's temperament is uh, usually a pretty good indication, yeah. right? Like we can look at some of those hunger cues. Um, are we following baby's early hunger cues? Mm -hmm. um, are we waiting too long? And yes. yes. Yeah. So how is that looking? Is baby relaxed after a feed? Is baby still tense after a feed? So yeah. looking at baby mm -hmm. is a huge, I mean, and what a wonderful thing. You have this little person that you're getting mm. to know anyway. So just really honing in on those cues and your baby's personality and just getting to know your baby will give you a lot of information. In the early days, if we feel like cramping uh, while we're latching baby, that's a really good indicator that your oxytocin reflex is working. So that's kind of neat. So oversupply. What does that look like? Yes, engorgement. So if we're having a situation where um, a woman's feeling really engorged, what can we do? That This can be a multifaceted situation. Um, if we're getting really full, it, it could be harder for baby to latch, right? And then it could be a little harder for baby to fully express the breasts there. So we could have a little milk removal before we latch baby. I think that's what I have most, I, I mean, that's what most of my clients do. Maybe they to pump them or softer. hand express a little bit to, um, I remember jumping in the shower sometimes to kind of relieve that first totally. before kind of doing that. Mm -hmm. Because at the beginning, you're going to have like that up down of, figure, of the regulation of that, right? Is that yes. fair to say? Like oh, regulating yeah. how much? Because that's why generally we recommend like not using pacifiers or not pumping in the first two weeks is because in the first two weeks, you're kind of telling your body, this is how much breast milk we yes. need to feed the baby. And if you're feeding the baby and producing, you know, pumping to produce for a second baby. Right. Like that your body goes, oh, let's produce all this. And so the trick is just being patient with yourself for a couple weeks. I don't know, if you're producing too much milk, you can utilize some of that when you're, when the breast feels full and it slows down production to your benefit a little mm -hmm. bit there. Mm -hmm. Allowing that regulation to take place and not, <clears> like <throat> you said, uh, removing so much milk that right. your body thinks, I have to make milk for, the whole kid, you're hiding in the attic. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need sober. And now. the other reason we want to bring that up too is because <laughs> sometimes when you have this oversupply, you can get plug milk dogs. This so sunflower lecithin, breast milk clearly has fat in it. Hooray! So sunflower lecithin does help reduce some of that tackiness, so that it helps the milk um, come out and not stick to the um, ducts as as much to release some of that. So we don't run into an issue where now we're, we have full breasts and we're having issues with clogs and this can help with thinning or the flow of that milk. So because yes, otherwise you help. get like these hard little nodules that are uncomfortable. And what the problem with is, is if you can't relieve that, it could turn into something like mastitis, yes. which is what we're trying to avoid. And mm -hmm. so we, if you can't cool that with like a warm compress or a shower yeah. and you find that you're getting them a lot going on a lecithin product, um, 
will help. Any kind of milk production product is a galactagog, right? It just kind of wants the body to produce more milk. Okay. And there's so many products out there. There's Wish Garden and Mother Love and- All the things. There's so many products out there that it can be completely overwhelming. We talked a little bit earlier about how like, would you say fenugreek? Fenugreek, Fenugreek yeah. works really well for some individuals yes. and it actually, it works for one and it doesn't work for another. Yeah, and so this this has some really great stuff in it. So this has goat's rue, has blessed thistle, fenugreek, um, anise, fennel, milk thistle as well. We're just finding out some women respond really positively to that fenugreek and some women don't. So it's sort of a, um, a you know, everyone's so individual. We have to figure yeah. out what works for our physiology. And so I think just having like a supplement and just committing to one bottle, right? Like you commit to one bottle, you see how that works for you. Um, Legendary Milk is one of the newer ones and they have a whole wide range and they do cater to several different things, whether it's a nutritional need, it's solely yeah. Galactagog, it's solely... I think the reason I like Moringa so much is because it's so cost effective. You could buy just Moringa. The Goat Through is the one product where studies have been done on it. Yeah. And so that's why Goat Through is kind of like a solid. It's like we spend so much time focusing on prenatal because we have the baby on the inside. And so we're wanting to grow this healthy kid. But postpartum when you've got the kid on the outside is just if not more important, right? And so what we liked is we brought out, these are a couple brands. This is Rainbow Light, this is New Chapter. There's a lot of different postpartum pregnancy, like anything that's a whole food space. They're gonna give you what you need while you're nursing and while you're postpartum to kind of help you be at your best, like your so optimum. You're not so the only thing I would say, I do like to add that, um, getting babies out in the sunshine so oh yeah right so getting babies out in the sunshine sun and it's vegas here so we get lots of sun oh i did want to talk about when it comes to latch right making for sure that we're having effective removal the way the breast anatomy works is we have these sinuses that are at the end of more or less the areola if we make for sure that baby's gums are coming to that at the the bottom of the breast to the end of the areola what happens is baby's gums compress these little sinuses that are surrounding that mm -hmm. and that's what that compression helps baby move milk into uh, as well as tongue function into baby's mouth and so yeah. latch can also play a role and a factor in that third phase of um, production for sure so just knowing that if you need help with that if there's something going on um, head up your local CLC Lactation counselor or consultant a, yeah mm -hmm. anyone IBCLC someone who knows um, but that's a perfect Lactation. point because sometimes women at the beginning or, or nursing individuals at the beginning they've got a good milk flow um, but if it's just kind of pouring into kids' mouth and they're not kind of getting that relationship stuck with you and some ways of knowing that is if you've got like a super gassy kid or a kid with yeah. a lot of hiccups or a kid that's kind of getting a lot of air, yeah. eventually that's not going to continue to work for you, right? It's going to work Correct. at the beginning for you because yeah. it's kind of like a cheat. However, yes. you really need that latch to work well in order to kind of tell your body to keep producing milk. So it's yes. a great thing to bring up because without it, we don't get that effective kind of relationship and dynamic. So yeah. we know and we understand that breastfeeding is a lot of components and so a lot more to talk about. If you want to hear more about some different breastfeeding stuff, please reach out. But for us, milk yeah. production is one that our shop gets a lot. Yes. And I think our clients that come in going, how do I know it's enough? And so we just wanted to touch a little bit on can supplements work? Absolutely. Can eating, yes. diet help? Absolutely. Yes. Latch, sleep, all of the things can help. And I think the most important yeah. at the end of the day is patience. Patience with your baby, patience with yourself. If you're a partner watching this, be patient, be kind. Um, but for the most part, milk production is something that every individual has that ability to do if that's something that is important to them so and every drop counts <laughs> thanks for joining us hopefully you found this video helpful if you did find it helpful like subscribe ring the bell um and we would love to hear from you and hear about what you guys would like to hear about yes what helped you with your milk production but thank you so much have a lovely week and we will see you next week bye you edit these things right no <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have this like, we're so organized. <laughs> we'll always tell people like, when you're pregnant, your baby takes everything from it and you're living on leftovers. Mm -hmm. It's really, that doesn't change. That doesn't yeah. change for the rest of your life. Forever. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. We're coming over for dinner. <laughs> Love you. I am having to pump lots and that's just the situation. Um, yes.
super fun.